In December 2021, Bobby Everson was killed while he was in the care and custody of the Federal Bureau of Prisons, allegedly by his cellmate. At the time of his death, he was housed at the federal prison in Thompson, Illinois, in the Special Management Unit, a unit notorious for poor management, harsh conditions, even before the Bureau of Prisons moved into Thompson from U.S. Prison Lewisburg in 2018. After an investigation by the Marshall Project and NPR found that Thompson had become one of the nation's deadliest prisons, I asked the Inspector General, Michael Horowitz, to examine Thompson as part of an investigation into the hundreds of deaths at Bureau of Prison facilities. One year ago, the Special Management Unit at Thompson was finally closed for good, and now we have the findings of the Inspector General's investigation. The Inspector General found things that are truly disturbing about our American prison system. He reports that operational and managerial deficiencies within the prison system have created unsafe conditions and presented critical threats to incarcerated individuals. Significant recurring issues like the failure to comply with policy, understaffing, insufficient mental health and substance abuse treatment have increased the risk and contributed to more and more deaths that are preventable. A prison sentence should not be a death sentence in America. The Inspector General's report also highlights that over half of the deaths in the scope of, were super, in, in that scope were suicides, and almost half the suicides occurred in restricted housing, otherwise known as solitary confinement. Earlier this month, the GAO released a compelling report on BOP's use of solitary confinement. Their findings were extremely troubling. As of October 2023, the Bureau of Prisons housed more, almost 8% of its prison population in solitary. Almost 8%. In many cases, people were confined in their cells for 23 hours a day. We know that the overuse of solitary confinement causes lasting, irreparable mental harm to incarcerated people. That is why I will soon reintroduce the Solitary Confinement Reform Act, legislation that would greatly limit the use of solitary confinement in our nation's prison system. <coughs> Depriving incarcerated adults of basic human rights and endangering their lives is no way to achieve justice. The Bureau of Prisons must do more to create safer and more humane conditions. As Chairman of Senate Judiciary, I will establish the practice of holding annual oversight hearings for the Bureau of Prisons. Tomorrow we'll hear from the Bureau of Prisons Director Colette Peters and the IG Michael Horowitz to discuss this IG report and examine what led to these deadly failures. The goal of our criminal system must be to rehabilitate offenders and prepare them to successfully re-enter society. Solitary confinement is not the avenue to pursue for assimilating these people back into America. It is long past time for the BOP to achieve this goal and it will only do so through transparency, accountability, and reform. Mr. President, it's been years now since I read an article in Atlantic Magazine by Atul Gawande, a physician in the Boston area who is now working in the Biden administration for USAID. I think he's an extraordinary observer of the, of the human scene. And he wrote an entire article about the impact on the human mind of isolation and confinement. He started talking about prisoners of war, like John McCain, a national hero, and the impact five years plus of incarceration had on him and his attitude toward life. And he went on to say that incarceration in our penal facilities is really not the right preparation for individuals who most will ultimately be released into society. I held two public hearings on solitary confinement and brought in one man who had been on death row in Texas for 10 years. He was an emotional basket case. He will never have a normal life as long as he lives. Another man who'd been in a similar circumstance in another state seemed to have assimilated well. He was now an over-the-road truck driver uh, in uh, the Midwest. They each told about what it meant each day to have 23 hours of isolation and then one hour where they knew there was another human being on Earth. That sort of treatment is inhumane at its heart. Sometimes it's absolutely necessary to maintain order in the situation. I understand that, but it should never be encouraged. 
Unfortunately, I'm sad to say that despite my interest in this issue, I have not made an appreciable difference in the number of people who are in solitary confinement in our prisons. We can do better. We must do better. The hearing which we will be hearing from the Inspector General gives us the guidelines to follow to improve this situation. I yield the floor.